All right, so Apple taking on some big news today, including the Justice Department, as maybe now a monopoly is in play. We're going to break it all down for you and how it affects crypto. It does affect crypto. Spoiler alert, it's going to be a good one. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Let's get started today with our sponsor, and that is Tangem. If you're looking at self custody, which I always suggest, whether you're new in crypto or you're an OG, Getting into self-custody is a very important part of your crypto journey. And the way you can do it is just visit Tangem's website, tangem.com. And you can click that little button right up there in the top right, get Tangem. And it was, it's going to take you to the three card set. This works in tandem with a great app, super slick, that you can get on the iOS store and the Android store and be able to start self-custing your own crypto, get it off exchanges and start going this route. Use our code down below. It does help the channel. All right, so let's just cut to the breaking news. This is a clip. Take a look. Breaking news here on Apple out of the DOJ. Eamon Javers has it. Eamon? Sarah, this is a civil antitrust lawsuit filed in the United States District Court for the District of New Jersey, and it alleges by the DOJ that Apple illegally maintains a monopoly over smartphones by selectively imposing contractual restrictions on and withholding critical access points from developers in five specific ways. One, by blocking innovative super apps. The second is by suppressing mobile cloud streaming services. The third is by excluding cross-platform messaging apps. The fourth is by diminishing the functionality of non-Apple smartwatches. And the fifth category here is limiting third-party digital wallets. They say Apple has prevented third-party apps from offering tap-to-pay functionality, inhibiting the creation of cross-platform third-party digital wallets, which, of course, is important in the whole paying ecosystem here. All right, so as you can see, this is not a light uh, situation, I think, for Apple. In this particular case, most likely, they're going to have to come to a settlement or come some sort of agreement of how they're going to go forward with this in terms of avoiding this monopoly that they hold. Now, you remember that the EU has already put a lot of pressure on Apple, and they've kind of given them a little bit of uh, a snub. Listen into this clip. Gather around, everyone. I've got the new rules here that we're going to do in the EU. It was super easy to do them. All I had to do was cover up this part. Yeah. First of all, if you want to launch an alternative app store, then you'll have to apply for our permission to let you do it. You have to agree to us scanning the apps in your marketplace and you have to be good for about a million euro loan if needed. So all you poor open source losers can just forget about launching your app stores on the iPhone. If you do want to make an alternate app store, then you will be charged that 50 euro cent fee right from the start. So 1 million downloads of the Epic App Store will cost Tim Sweeney 500,000 euro dollars. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, and developers, you can only have one single version of an app in all the different app stores, okay? So you can't have a slightly different app with more features in someone else's store because, well, that would give customers a reason to go somewhere other than us. And is exactly right. I mean, Apple has uh, con continued to curtail the law around what's happening in the EU. And, and definitely did get kind of an F you to the EU. So it's, uh, it's an issue that I think we're going to continue to see. Only difference now is when the U.S. gets involved in this, I think this changes the game quite a bit. All right, so I want to go to another clip. This is where Apple bans Epic, which may have been the, the straw of the book, the camel's back. Listen in. Epic's developer account was terminated, which means no Fortnite on iOS. Apple accused Epic Games of egregious breaches to its developer agreements, and said that the courts made it clear that it has the sole discretion to terminate developer accounts. But you might be wondering, what are these egregious violations? Well, Apple cited one of them as this tweet from Tim Sweeney, where basically he says Apple developers create banger products, but their corporate policies are cringe AF. Yeah, you heard that correctly. Apple banned a developer over a mildly critical tweet. As a side note, Sweeney also referenced Apple's recent decision to drop progressive web apps from Safari. Apple was never a fan of PWAs, and what's funny is that they use DMA as an excuse to remove them entirely. In reality though, PWAs are great for consumers and developers, but a threat to the App Store. But it really does seem like Apple is speedrunning the destruction of its relationship with developers. I own you. You're my bitch. And that means you might want to think twice about posting a tweet that's even remotely critical of Apple's policies. All right, so as you can see, I mean, everybody's starting to do memes, and this is, I think, going to continue, but this is serious business, and it does have an effect on the future of crypto, especially when you have iOS controlling, at least here in the U.S., over 50% of the market share. 
I want to go to this next clip that is talking about the Disney lawyers that could be starting to gear up. Listen in. Disney decided to dive headfirst back into gaming with a massive $1.5 billion investment into Epic Games and Fortnite. And usually, Spencer, <laughs> usually Disney and Apple get along pretty well. So when Apple uh, retaliates allegedly against Epic Games and Fortnite, now they're retaliating against Disney. Now Their friends are firing, yeah. <laughs> is interesting. This gets even more interesting now, Spencer, because Disney oh, owns yeah. a significant chunk of Epic Games. Disney is now in a battle royale against Apple. All right, so as you can see, gaming is going to be the one area, I think, that gets one of the most immediate effects of this particular lawsuit. Now, it's going to take maybe a year or even two to get this thing curtailed out, but I think it's going to start setting up for a lot of these companies to queue in not only gaming, but also strategies going into the Apple ecosystem. Further into this, I want to go to over to GDC, and GDC, of course, is the big developers conference. There's a lot happening there, both on the Web3 side, but also on the Web2 side. This is Epic talking or a little bit more about Epic at GDC. Look in. For the past few years, Epic has tirelessly been fighting gatekeepers on mobile platforms to allow for distribution that is more fair, more open, and built for how we need to run our businesses today. And this battle is not over yet. However, we have made enough progress, and I'm here today to make an announcement that we're super pumped about, and that is that we are hard at work on the Epic Game Store for mobile, targeting to launch on iOS and Android by the end of this year. <laughs> EGS will become the first ever game-focused, multi-platform store that will work across Android, iOS, PC, and Mac, anchored by our players' Epic accounts. I think this is kudos. I mean, it's kudos to Epic, but uh, obviously we, you know, you know, the fact that they are going to have to go head to head with Apple on this is going to continue to pretty much face up to a lot of challenges. But again, this lawsuit could change the direction of both companies uh, in very unique ways. I want to also get over to another clip. This is Linus uh, from Linus on Tech. He talks a little bit more about the Apple monopoly. I think he kind of agrees with what the situation is. Listen in. It's, like, it's triple dipping, actually. First, they charge the user for the device. Then they charge the developer just to have a developer account. Oh, no, we're up to quadruple dipping now. For, then they charge the developer to have a developer account. Then they charge you a core technology fee if you actually have a very successful app. Then they charge you a 10% fee on subscriptions, 17% for digital goods and services. At what point does it end? Well, you also have to use their payment system. So when I pay full price for something, my understanding and your understanding should be that it belongs to you. And so the fact that anyone is not offended by this, that anyone sees this behavior and goes, yeah, this is good. It's just baffling to me. And if you make the choice to only use the App Store, by all means. But when I say I shouldn't have to, Again, sit down and shut the f up. It's that simple. Listen, I agree with Linus, but there are some alternatives out there, and I think there's going to be a lot more alternatives, especially brewing with what's happening with Apple. I think the ecosystem has finally got its first major chink in its armor, and it's going to start setting up other ecosystems to thrive. One of a course that we've talked about here is Solana Mobile. And Solana Mobile, as you guys know, we have talked about this, by the way, use our link to get your own Saga phone. There's going to be a Web3 DApp store within Solana and the mobile ecosystem that I think is going to rival innovation, especially in Web3, and there's a good way to do it. All you have to do is click our link. If you decide you want to get one of those phones, it's a great thing uh, to go in and get um, uh, the pre-order on that. You can actually go in and get Chapter 2. All right, so there's the early adopter. This is closing soon. You can still get this one for about 500 bucks. The founder window, window did close, so uh, be on the lookout for that. But I think this is another one that uh, is just going to open up, and we're going to see many, I think, ecosystems. Obviously, you know, Android is probably going to maybe start to get some market share here with what's happening. But even that, to a certain extent, still has some limitations. So what the DOJ is doing is, I think, setting the tone for a lot of these app maker, or app developers makers and marketplaces that are moving on. Now, Linus didn't completely let the crypto side of this off. 
Here was a little bit of a clip of him talking about the strategy that Dr. Disrespect was doing. Take a look. Dr. Disrespect, developing an FPS game, but Midnight Society is graciously offering a select group of 10,000 community members a $50 Founders Access Pass that will provide access to early builds, Discord channels, and the chance to vote on key design decisions. So, pause for a second. They just put NFTs and loot boxes and paid early access together. Let's go. It's like <laughs> it's like one middle finger wasn't enough. Can I be a billionaire, please? Can we just embrace this? No. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's just take it for what it is, guys. I mean, this is the model in which these games are going to be developed in the future. You might as well get used to it, Linus. This is what's going to happen. And by the way, if you look at the NFT, that guy that spent the 50 bucks right now, well, you know, it's worth 500. So let's just say that not, not a bad little uh, loot box NFT uh, combo there uh, for what uh, Disrespect is doing. And the fact that we have a YouTuber building a game ecosystem, I mean, to me, that's entrepreneurship at its level headed, much like what Linus has done in building a media company around tech. Eh, let me think about that. How many sponsors does he have that pays for the, uh, that? Is that the FQ to you? I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Anyway, further on, let's take a look at where the market's going, because this is one of the things that you have to look at, and that is crypto and NFTs and the popularity of them. If you kind of zoom in on this, let me see if I can kind of get a little closer for you guys. You can kind of see something very interesting happening here. Right here about, let's see, what date is that? Let's look here. Looks like uh, 2020. Uh, crypto goes up. And then right after crypto drops, NFT goes up. Then crypto goes up. And then crypto drops. And then NFTs go up. And you can kind of see, there's a little bit of a cycle here. Crypto goes up, then comes down. And guess what happens? NFTs are the next holy grail of a lot of these wealth effect money holders, NFTs become the target zone for a lot of where crypto is going. So definitely still popular. I think this is going to continue to be. And with Web3 Gaming coming into the space, I think it's only going to accelerate uh, going forward. Web3 Gaming sucks. This was a great play by Avalanche. Kudos to Avalanche. This was their, their booth over at uh, GDC. And guess where they were? They were right there at the escalator. So everybody that's coming down, they get a, a chance to see that right there. So well-placed, well-played by the people at AVAX Gaming, uh, definitely doing a good job at introducing this. All right, so further into GDC, Shrapnel adds an in-game marketplace on Epic uh, Game Store as an 80,000 event begins. And of course, what they're talking about is 80,000 uh, for the marketplace. And I think this is another place where Shrapnel is gonna continue to drop a lot of these NFTs. And remember, with Shrapnel, you've got all those skins, weapons, all that kind of stuff that start to play into this. This is a good example of it right now. Partnership with weapons and skins. There's some of them starting to play out right there. These are the coolest weapons, by the way. I think Shrapnel has some of the best uh, designers on this, which is a great theme. And, you know, this is still Web3. If you're not looking at Shrapnel, we got to get the Shrapnel guys back on the show for sure uh, to kind of go a little bit deeper. But anyway, the point is, is Web3 is thriving. Web3 Gaming is thriving at GDC, and I think this is a good place to kind of see these new introductions. Now, one thing that is happening within the Avalanche ecosystem is how these subnets can interact with each other. All right, so what I'm showing right here is the use of Teleporter. I'll back it up a little bit to show you guys. So some of the skins you just saw, this is a good example of, of how these assets can move from one subnet, you know, the game ecosystem, to another subnet right there within uh, the teleporter app. So very simple drag and drop kind of thing. I think this is, again is just another value that Avalanche is bringing to the Web3 gaming space. They have come on really strong here in the last 18 months and pretty much become one of the leaders out there. Okay, I wanna go over and show you guys another clip. This is the core app in using Pulsar. Now Pulsar also a game, we've had the team on our show before. Let me show this, this uh, function. So this is what you're seeing on screen now is the core wallet. That's Avalanche's wallet, I guess, comparison to say Phantom. And you're having access to a widget, which is the Pulsar game. And this gives you the ability to be able to look and see what your assets are doing, even when you're not playing the game. So that to me is a really interesting model because nobody else is really doing that. So kind of a cool feature, I think.
Okay, so here is uh, something we're doing that is a partnership with Pulsar. They gave us this. Uh, they didn't pay us to do this, but they gave it to us to give to you guys. It is a referral code, Paul underscore Baron. You can see it right there. This is an NFT pack that's very special, only available to the PBN. All you have to do is visit Pulsar.game. So when you guys go in and do that, get these NFTs because it will help you, one, gain Pulsar, the potential token, and also enable you to get access to this token a little bit uh, differently. So make sure and check it out. It's free, absolutely no cost to you guys. I don't know how many they're giving away, so get there and get them done quickly uh, and check it out. All right, let's move along here. And I want to kind of go over to a couple other things that are happening at GDC. Live at GDC, San Francisco, 75,000 avatars on the Venar blockchain. Uh, this is a company that has been out there called Metagravity. And they're enabling some pretty interesting solutions. And I think when you look at Metagravity and what they've done, they've partnered with some very interesting gaming companies. Obviously, we know Star Atlas, Wilder World just recently came on, and then their Edge of Chaos is their own game within Metagravity. So this is just another tool set, that, as I said earlier, that is creating a lot more innovation in gaming for Web3. I still think Web3 gaming is going to have so many unique differences over Web2 that eventually the gamers are going to get it and they are going to come in droves for sure, especially when you look at uh, what's happening out there. This is just a little bit of uh, video from Edge of Chaos right there. I mean, this is, this is definitely AAA. I mean, you've got to say, not bad. Good for them. Glad to see this kind of stuff being developed in Web3. Another announcement, of course, we've had the Offend team on before. Uh, they were on just last week. They told us this was coming. And of course, that's the big one. Buddy Arena has launched now. So the global launch now live on both the App Store and Google Play. And uh, listen, Offend is a very interesting project. This is going to be one that I think continues to grow throughout this bull run. We're going to see some pretty cool things coming from them. If you look at the token, this, of course, is just a pop on the launch that we saw on Affin now to an all-time high. What are we going up to around 1498 on, on uh, their all-time high wick right there? This thing, I'm not going to tell you that it's going to start doing some numbers, but I have a feeling this, this token is just beginning mainly just like the game company itself. Affin is definitely a different breed in Web3 gaming, so check it out. Another thing that's happening, here's Robbie over at Immutable X talking about Web3 Gaming is clearly becoming the next breakout category. I agree, Robbie, 100%. Won't be with the Wayne or the next bear. We've been building obsessively six years, including five games internally, dog fooding every customer problem. I understand that. Uh, they say that ZKEVM is launching uh, with early access imminent. Um, I'll believe it when I see it, but if it does happen, there's going to be kudos to Robbie and his team. I hope so. I'm a fan of IMX. I just don't see the kind of growth that I would like to see on this, but they are garnering a lot of partnerships. So that's one big advantage. One thing to think about on this is Polygon is set to introduce this support uh, in May. So still a little bit further out yet to be able to get the 4844. Remember that was the upgrade of Dencon and was designed to create lower gas fees and even more fractional uh, lower gas fees. Why does that matter? Because the lower these transaction fees, we can get into these micro transactions that are needed in so many retail functions, including gaming. Gaming is, of course, going to be the center of it, but there's going to be other, a lot of other applications that are going to be out there uh, going on this. So anyway, I'm just looking at the Apple chart right now. Uh, as of this morning, there's the Apple chart seeing a little bit of red in the water with what's happening here with the DOJ. So... This trading range is kind of interesting because you'll notice these tops over here around this 170 range. If this thing breaks through, whoo, now we're talking about a 150 range coming in next. This would be devastating for Apple if they continue to get pressure here. I think not only from press, but I think now, finally, you've got so many people in the development, the innovation side, and maybe even some political ploys that could play into this. Because remember who Apple is super frenzy with Senator Warren. That's right. So if you're anti-Warren, then you kind of almost have to be anti-Apple. But hey, we're using Apple right here. <laughs> May not be using it very long, but anyway, it's one to watch. We're going to keep you guys updated on all this good stuff. Make sure and jump into the Diamond Circle. And of course, follow me on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.